Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, all praises and the blood is due to Yahweh Bashem Hamashi Yaqwa Malak Yahushai. Secondly, this is Brother Yardan W5 Detroit coming back at you with yet another cold cut. Today in this cold cut, we will be discussing masturbation and what does the Bible say about it? Alright, this is a very, very big topic. Um, it's so much to speak about. I might have to do part one, two, and three. Um, again, this is a very, very big topic. And believe it or not, this is a lot of things that Israel struggles with, whether you want to admit it or not, you know, whether you be male or female, a lot of Israel, they struggle with masturbation, right, which is nothing but lust. Now, of course, we're going to bring out precepts, points, some, um, some, some secular knowledge, all going back on how this is a, a wicked thing in the eyes of the Lord, and how it's very, very harmful to your mind and your body as well, and of course your spirit. So let's start off with Second Second Timothy two and twenty two. Flee also. Now I want to get the background because when we read anything, I don't want to just read blindly. I want Israel to know the context behind what's written and why it's written. Right now, this is Paul writing to Timothy. Therefore, you know, First Timothy, Second Timothy is to Timothy, Paul, an apostle of Yahweh Shai Mashiach by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Yahweh Shai our Lord. This is the introduction, right, and it's addressing Timothy. Now, whether or not Timothy was his actual son. That's up for for debate. Scholars uh, argue yay, others nay. That's not really the point here. But the overall um, message is, it's like it's 2 Timothy 2 and 22. The overall message for this main cold cut is to flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call the, on the Lord out of a pure heart, right? You know, I should probably start start up a little bit more. Let's start at verse 21. It's lucky. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, right? Remember, we're a vessel. We're a vessel unto the Lord. And not only that, we're gold. But when you pick up gold for the first time, that's not, it's not in its purest form. It's not its final form, as you would say. You know, there's that old meme, this isn't even my final form. And you have to wake up and, you know, tell yourself that. You know, or every time you fall short, you have to tell yourself, hey, well, this isn't my final form. Whenever you fall short to lust or any other type of wickedness, you have to tell you, hey, this is my final form. This isn't me. This really doesn't identify me, right? If a man therefore purge himself from these he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, meaning set apart, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Right? That's plain upon tables. You know, everybody in their house has a favorite cup or a favorite vessel. You know, you want to honor it. Right? Not worship it, but you really, you know, use it the most. It's verse 22. And, you, and, and, and like man, you want the most high to utilize you, you know, uh, it's like it. You really want the most high to utilize you, right? To the fullest advantage, that his name may be magnified. Verse 22, flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Now that's plain upon tables. You have to flee youthful lust. And a lot of these things, or... I should say masturbation and, and that por pornography demon that starts at a young age that starts in our youth you don't just turn 30 and you just get addicted to it you know Esau you know of course we have to hold ourselves accountable but Esau he he opened the floodgates there's a lot of um, how do you say uh, predictive programming there's a lot of um, innuendos and in, in speech within movies especially Disney Channel and the Cartoon Networks. You have a lot of provocative images displayed, hidden uh, messages and, and, um, and drawings 
it's a lot of um, para, uh, phallic, I would say. That's that's the word. There's a lot of phallic symbols in cartoons and Disney uh, shows, old Disney shows, you know. And that gets into you know into the young kid's mind, and then you know they're they're more understanding or more. Uh, how do I say? They have more of a, an acceptance of it. They're ready to accept it because they're that that seed has already been planted within their mind, you know? So you have to flee youthful lust, you know, especially when you first come into this truth. I mean, you come in as a babe. You literally come in as a babe. That's Matthew, the 18th chapter, that's second Ezra's, you know, the, uh, let's bring out the 14th chapter. You know, when you sub, let, let's just bring it out. Fourteen and ten, it's lucky. Where should we start? And it's another one in uh, thirty-four. But I want to give verse ten. Let go from the mortal thoughts, cast away the burdens of man, put off the now the weak nature. Because when you come into the truth, into the house of the Lord, you have to leave that man at the door, right? And that man, that old man, I should say, may have had a lust demon, heavy, heavy, just, just downright dirty, deep in the trenches, lust demon. Every time you, every time you see a woman, you know, you just get riled up, you get stirred up, you know. Every time you scroll on Instagram, you just get stirred up. And we're gonna get on Instagram and Twitter, and then we're gonna get on the social media in a second. But I just want to first address when you come into this truth, and you become that newborn creature. You sincerely have to put that into subjection immediately. You know? Therefore, if so be, that ye will subdue your own understanding and reform your hearts, that ye shall be kept alive after death, ye shall obtain mercy. So let's Google the word reform. Now, some people go to reform school. You got, um, you, you know, there's, it, it's deep. It's like, yeah, uh, that's Satan. Some people go to reform school. Reform school is when you go to, um, you know, you pretty much change yourself. So like, yeah, that's Satan. But yeah, you know, you got something called reform school. And that's pretty much where you have a, um, a huge character development. You know, you improve. You know, you're, ref you're refined. You alter. You remake. You remodel. Right? Make changes in something typically or socially, politically or economic institution or practice in order to improve, improve it, you know? And really, when you come into the house of the Lord, this is a new reform school, <laughs> you know? So let's bring out, let's go back to it, All right? Let's bring out 1 Corinthians 13 and 11. You have to reform yourself coming in the truth. In the same way, you, you know, you enter a new job, you reform yourself. You kind of adapt to the environment, you know. You, you know your behavior changes a little. Perhaps you may, may pick up some new words. That's you know really adapting to the to the um, to the lingo that has to be uh, utilized in that work environment. You know. So we adapt to a lot of things in life, whether we um, know it or not. You know. So when you come to the truth, that's when you should really make that effort to adapt and to reform yourself. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Pornography and masturbation, those, that's childish things. You know? And essentially, it's an adultery. It's sex, per sex perversion. You know? It's an addiction. And that literally messes up your, your, um, your chemical balances within your head. We'll get to that later as well, but I just want to um, open the door by letting Israel know when you come into this truth, you sincerely have to flee youthful lust. Remember that you're here to serve the Lord and the Lord is not messing around. He's not a nice guy coming back with a chili dog and a foam finger and, and, and a uh, damn NBA jersey on, a Kobe jersey on. Talk about let's go to New York City. I want to see the sights. He's coming back with a sharp sword 
He's coming back with a sickle. He's coming back with fire. He's coming back with a with a whole crew. And the Lord is not a nice guy. All right, this is Sarai 18 and 23. Before thou prayest, that's not what I want. 18 and 30. Go not after thy lust, but refrain thyself from thine appetites. And pornography, masturbation, if you start doing it once or twice, you get addicted to it. It becomes a, a, a lust or really more so an appetite. You have an appetite for it. And you're not full until you, it's like you're not full until you accomplished or executed whatever you needed to uh, execute, you know? Or execute your lust, I would say. You're not really fooling until you execute your lust. And then you feel bad afterwards. And then you kind of put your head down. It's 12 in the morning. You're shaking your head. You're ashamed. Oh, what, what, what happened? You know, you're destroying all your socks. You know, you know that. And, oh my goodness, hey, 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 it's a lot. It's a lot to tell. You know, every single brother, you got a lot of sisters. They all struggle with it. It's not really spoken as openly because you know Israel be ashamed. You know, and there's nothing wrong with shame, of course. But remember this verse. Remember this precept. People say, ah, he joking about it. why he sound crazy. Why you? Hey, no, we got to be real. You know. We gotta have a, a, a honest talk about this. Sarah 422. It's like your verse uh that's not it. Four and uh it's like Four and twenty one. You know, of course I may add some humor to it to, uh to, to lighten it up, but this is serious stuff, man. This is real life. Cause your soul is on the line, you know. And a lot of times Israel feels shameful afterwards, and he says, "Man, I'm not doing this truth no more. I keep falling short. Oh man, it's got a demon on me. Man, there's no point. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep doing it. I can't stop. You know. So you don't want to let your shame, you know, bring forth more sin. It's Sarah four and two, uh, twenty-one. For there is a shame that bringeth sin, and there is a shame which is glory and grace. In other words, your shame can bring you, could drive you to more sin, right? You feel so shameful. You're like, your mindset and mentality is like, F it, I'm going to do it again. Or on the contrary, you could allow your shame to drive you to success, right? Which is glory and grace. Because in your shame, you only feel two things, right? Um, you feel compelled to do it again, or you feel compelled to to um, to rectify the situation, to make it right with the Lord, right? To pray and to beseech him, ask for mercy and grace. And then once you're allowed that, uh, that grace, then you have that glory. So for those who may, you know, feel shameful, that's good. Shame is a good feeling. It's good to feel shameful, but don't let that shame destroy you. Allow that, you know, drive that shame to glory and success. By telling yourself, okay, I'm going to do this next time to prevent it. I'm going to cut off my right hand. I'm gonna, And we'll get that. You know, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm not going to do that. I got to get off that side. I, I can't text her no more. I can't text him. Oh, yeah, I know I usually slip up around this time. You have to really sit back and examine your life and examine yourself to ensure that you're loving God accordingly to the best of your ability. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. Verse 5, examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves, know ye not your own selves, that how that Yahweh Shamashiach is in you, except ye be reprobates. You see that? You must ex self examine in this truth. If you don't, you will fall short back to back to back to back. You keep falling off and keep falling short. What's going on? Why is this happening? You're not examining yourself, right? You think. A team that's 0-10, they just say, well, why we keep losing? Let's just try again. You No, know, they go back to the chalkboard and try to figure out what's going on wrong every single time, you know? Or at least that's what they should do. 
So you have to examine yourself. You have to examine your faith. You have to examine your spirit. You know, there's a lot of things to examine. You have to look at yourself the same way that a damn mechanic looks at a car. Because, or a house inspector looks for certain things in a the house. They have a, that, that damn brown board with the paper on it. And there's a list of things that, the, that they have to check for. If this is leaking, if this wire is out of place, if this outlet's kind of jammed up, you know, if this switch is bad, there's a list of things that they have to look for. And you have to see yourself in the same manner. You have to write down a list of things. Okay, I'm falling short on that. I keep doing that. That happened again. You have to examine yourself. That's what it really means. And upon examining yourself, it's not just, okay, I did this, I did that. Okay. No, you have to work on it. You have a problem. You're sick. Right? You're sick. And you have to figure out what's going on with you. Same way a doctor treats his patients. He examines the patient. Thus finding a, a solution through examination. Right? So you have to find a solution. But first, to get to that solution, you have to examine your body, your, your spirit, your life, your surroundings, your environment. You have to examine all of that, weigh it in the balance, figure out what's enabling you or what's um, provoking you. You know, I'm going to get one more and uh, we'll close, close up and uh, start part two. What was that? Colossians 3 and 5. Mortify, let's Google that word. Mortify, and uh, really, yeah, that it means that as well. But originally, it means to subdue, subjugate, to destroy, or, or to discipline, I'll say, to punish, to deny. Right? I like that word, deny. Deny, right? Punish. What does it say? Subjugate, restrain. You have to restrain your members. Put in a damn chokehold. Right? Mortify therefore your members, which are upon the earth, fornication. That's what a masturbation is. That's what pornography is. That's what lust and after smutty is. Uncleanness, inordinate affection. What's an inordinate affection? Because some Jacob say, well, the well, Bible don't say you can't masturbate. They just pull out, oh, nine. That's, that account is uh, Genesis 38. That don't really count. You can't really. No, I mean, pull out. That's a little different. And you can, that means you can do pornography. No, hold up. Inordinate affection. You know what it is. Let's Google it. Inordinate. Unusual. Disproportionately. Excessive. Unreasonable. Unwarranted. Right? Right? So lusting after a woman that you don't know, that's unwarranted. Destroying your your vessel, your flesh at midnight, that's unwarranted. Breaking your body, abusing yourself, that's uncalled for. That's an inordinate affection. You're worshiping yourself. That's essentially what it is. Evil concupiscence. That's evil. You know? And and covetousness, which is idolatry, and that's what it is too. It's coveting. You're coveting after well, you know, you know the situation, you know what you're watching, or you know whatever you're falling short to, you're coveting. You're making that your God. But with that, I'm going to close out. Um, Abba Ratiza, I'll be able to do part two soon. We'll be touching on how uh, Amalek, how he has dominance in a, uh, in an industry, and how he started it. All right, we'll get to that and these other sources as well. So with that, I'm going to bid his or shalom. Until next time.